What is up, you savages? This is the Protect Your Neck Podcast, and I'm your host, Dan Tom. Analyst is work you can find over at MMAJunkie.com, but on this year's program, the Protect Your Neck Podcast, we break down high-level MMA. That's what we're going to do here today, tonight, and whenever you listen to this. Hopefully, it's for the fight. Recording this late Thursday night, West Coast Pacific Time, uh, Pacific Time specifically, right here in Las Vegas, where UFC 264, Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor 3 will be going down. Um, as per usual on this podcast, check the timestamps. There's not going to be a lot to cut through to recap, not a lot of notes, just some shout outs off the top. And we will get to the breakdown, which again, on the timestamps, I will note. Uh, we do all breakdowns here for the breakdown shows uh, that aren't the top five shows. We do those from top to bottom, from the main event all the way down. And uh, at the very end, uh, if you're short on time or just want to skip through or whatnot for your convenience, do recap the uh, picks and plays at the very end for you. So that's the. Uh, a very basic outline for this. Thank you for joining me. If it's your first time, if you're a long-time listener, eh, you know what to expect. As the voices and the <laughs> tone can change from, from time to time. But man, it's a it's a great week. Um, recording this a little later than I thought. I was going to try to record this earlier Thursday. But um, your boy here uh, picked up uh, another yob. Uh, 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 some more work, uh, which I'll, I'll, I'll give a nod to here in a second. And... Um, also, I uh, jumped on another uh, another podcast. I had such a good time. Fuck, man. It's so good to see see some people uh, in person who I haven't seen in, like, years. And um, I, I missed most of the bulk of the media yesterday for, like, media day. I didn't go for that. I just kind of came at the end of the Apex to do a preview show uh, with my man John Morgan there and, and uh, Ken Hathaway at the helm. But, um, my goodness, we didn't realize, like, it's been so long since I've seen so many of these people. And it was um, it, it was such a great, great time. Thank you all for... Uh, whoever joined live, I know my man uh, Robert G did. Um, I'm gonna assume Mark Fellows did, just because he's everywhere and he's the the fucking man. Cheers, Mark. Uh, he did actually. Yeah, he asked us a question about beer. Of course, he was there. <laughs> Double cheers, Mark. Especially if you ended up having that beer that you asked us about. If not, I will drink vicariously through you, sir. Uh, anyways, it was such a good time. John uh, had me back on for the uh, MMA uh, Hold Show. Um, as I do the brutal R to H there for no reason, but uh, the MMA Road Show. Um, man. Uh, it's been a minute since I've been on there too. It's been a minute since I've seen those guys, man. And we saw some other people there. Um, uh, I guess I'll spoil it because she ended up going the episode. Uh, Jules Kedzie was there. That was cool. Uh, Nancy Kidder for writing and fighting. Really appreciate her work. So it was really cool to see people that like, you know, I've, I've, I haven't seen and could you know, tell them that they're doing you know, awesome work and that I appreciate it too. You know, the usuals like my colleagues or, you know, colleagues uh, work for different outlets like uh, Oscar Willis for the Mac Life or my man Josie Young's from MMA Fighting. Like I said, man, you know, I, I don't care if people work for uh, different outlets. Uh, you know, if you're my friend, I will I will shout you when I see you. And uh, it was good to see those dudes um, for sure. So uh, it, it was good times, man. I just um, – and I'm not trying to name drop here. I just, I just try to get around to, like, the point of, like, I'm just grateful, man. Um no, it's not the booze talking I've been able to eat since uh, <laughs> that recording, and back home now. But uh, no, it, I'm just I'm just grateful, man. It's been it's been a crazy year for everybody, of course, and uh, especially if you're like me, living the pandemic lifestyle, you're not that uh, social. Um, you know, you just it just felt good to to, to see some people again. Uh, other than that, I wasn't planning on going down to the Vegas Strip too much. Um, you know, trying to see some people who are in town, of course, uh, to make that happen. We're going to do some workarounds there. Um, but uh, but it, it was, uh, you know, if, if my curmudgeon ass is going to get out, it was it was nice to see people that I see. Other than that, though, Fight Week here in Vegas is not normally the same as a pay-per-view or a Connor pay-per-view. The Irish are not in town due to a lot of travel restrictions, quarantines, and a lot of other loops and whatnot. And um, you know what? It, boy, you know... Um, I don't, know, I don't know the state or how serious. I mean, it's, it's serious, obviously. Uh, I don't know the state of it, I guess, is a better way to phrase it. But, yeah, I did see some things, too, about Las Vegas uh, COVID spikes, which is like, ooh. Okay, maybe I feel a little less crazy for, uh, you know, trying to, you know. Like when I go in the grocery stores, you know, and whatnot, I still try to, you know. It's, it's weird here. It's like, are we wearing the mask? Are we not? And, like, you know, to be honest, it was, it was nice. Like, I'm pretty good about not getting sick for the most part, but... It was nice, like, not getting sick at all because, you know, you're, like, you know, <laughs> not breathing in other people's shit. So th there's some pros and cons there, but uh, I guess there's some variants going about. So I'm no scientist uh, to weigh in on that stuff, but I will say that 
did that was an interesting development. Hopefully, uh, you know, wishing only the best, of course, but, you know, something that is uh, going on that should be noted here in Vegas. You get the Garth Brooks and stuff in town, so it's going to be pretty crazy. Another reason why, like, I would normally avoid... People who know me know this. I normally avoid the strip anyways for normal pay-per-views. And, like, especially for this, with everything going on from, like, you know, it's that, 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 like, what I, what I cited in Hawaii is kind of going on here in Vegas because it's a very tourist-based uh, economy, if you will, uh, you know, over here. And, um, yeah, it, it's a bit in flux, you know, as things are opening back up and getting restaffed, yet everybody's, you know, especially the more privileged amongst us here in the U.S. are uh, ready to party, if you will. So um, it creates, you know, kind of chaos. People are essentially waiting in line for everything. So, yeah, I, I definitely uh, not not trying to do that whole whole mess. So, um, yeah, but I'll, I'll try to see people as I can, hopefully. I know it's been weird uh, with everything, but those of you who reached out, thank you all. And, um, and, yeah, man, just everybody, as, as, as I rounded this circle the drain here, I just want to thank everybody literally uh people were just way too kind people in the industry even you know like i did a youtube post got to 500 subs which is not you know now to like 550 like it's crazy like people just started like uh i know i posted about it before but i don't know what it was it just caught on and people just maybe felt extra kind you know everyone from the whole fight site crew by by the way shout out to the fight site.com fight dash site.com uh support uh support their patreon really really good people to support and um you know uh you know coming clean i haven't been able to support as much as i like uh, via the patreons and stuff and have had to kind of you know uh, you know I, I i let's just say i get it man it's 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 crazy time we have to you know watch our budget so to speak you know so uh, i don't casually by any means you know to try to tell anybody to put their money in bets much less you know where to support, but when it, whether it's like I'm, I'm shouting at my own colleagues, like you know uh, George and Goes and Junkie Radio or the Road Show, or I'm shouting out other uh, obviously well worth uh, you know uh, sites or causes, whatever you want to call it, shows. Um, you know, like like you know, the Fight Site or uh, you know Southpaw. Uh, shout out to my man Sam Yang and the rest of the Southpaw crew over there. Um, it's uh, I get it. You know, we we all don't have disposable income, even though a lot of the these places asking prices like for a cup of coffee but uh you know even if even if i can or you can't i still feel it's still good to give shouts out you know and support in in that form if you can so yeah man um i just i feel like shouting everybody it's crazy i think you know you know john sheehan severe may of those guys uh jack slack downward elbow you know, fellow analysts of the online there giving giving my stuff shares it was just ridiculous i, I don't deserve it uh, I'm I'm weird about compliments. I never liked birthdays as a kid for this reason. Um, so I just gonna you know dedicating this whole first part as a big shout out, a big thank you, a big gratitude, a big gratefulness. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming along this journey, being with me while I grow. Shout out the Sound of Violence guys too. They just hit episode 200, and like even on there, there was a bunch of people that like were way too kind. Um, Ed Gallo out there trying to make me cry and shit. One of the best analysts in this space, like ha hailing my praises. I and mean, what the fuck, what the fuck did I do, man? But uh, just way too kind. Love Ed, obviously. Love everybody over there. Um, but uh, and, and speaking of Sam Yang and Southpaw, uh, who also freaking didn't deserve it, but gave me a really nice shout amongst other uh, people who I respect a lot. So it's like, um, but but he said it the best. I'll steal his words, I guess. Is that uh. I've been doing a lot of growing. Uh, I hope I'm trying to. Um, I'm realizing that there's a lot to be done for me, uh, growing wise. So, really trying to focus on that more. Um, you know, really easy to get lost inward or looking outward, as I tend to do. I'm definitely guilty of that, uh, as you guys know. Um, but uh, but yeah, man. So thank you guys just for for. All, I know I've left a bunch of people out, but thank you all for who supported the show. And uh, can stuck with me while I'm I'm trying to grow and sort shit out too because like I say with most things and I don't say enough that's why I'm making sure to state it here too is that a lot of most of the stuff that I I shout or preach I'm just as guilty of too folks so I'm trying so thank you guys for sticking it out with me and um, I know we all have our differences I think like that's something we all can relate to this past year you know with our social circles work circles whatnot and has us feeling certain ways justly you know or or, or you know overblown and, and all throughout that spectrum right but i guess the easiest thing or the simplest thing to say 
is that we all need to remember that, you know, um, especially when you start seeing people, you know, and, and making contact again, it's just like, we're all fucking human beings, man. And uh, we all come from different experiences. And, um, and yeah, man, I don't know. Call me falsely optimistic. Maybe there is still a bit of booze in my system, but uh, I don't know, man. I'm just, there's a lot to be grateful for, at least for me. So I'm really just trying to express that, pay that forward. And, um, and yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, speaking of grateful, shouts to um, odds, uh, oddschecker.com. Going to be doing some weekly plays for UFC cards um, over there for them. So those of you who missed and liked, you know, which I don't blame you, by the way. Not having to listen to a podcast of this drone, you know, drone on here myself. But um, if you like those written and concise plays, um, I'll give those to you there. They're going to be posted this week. Uh, so look for me to post that at Dan Tom MMA, where I post all my things on Twitter. You can also follow this podcast at the PYM Podcast on all social platforms that don't pollute your feed. You can contribute to top five shows. It's a free show. It will remain free. But if you do want to support in any way, you can go to MixedMarshallAnalyst.com, the site that supports and hosts this here program. There are Amazon and Onnit click-throughs. I know we don't like to support corporations, not especially necessarily those, but... If you are like me and they are a necessary evil in your life as you deem so, you can kill two birds with one stone in regards to easing a bit of that burden on your conscience. You click through the link, uh, you toggle to the right if you're on the mobile. The mobile! Uh, but at mixedmarshallanalyst.com, you see the click throughs. You just one extra click, or two if to get to the site if you want to be technical. Two extra clicks, and you are on your site of choice from on it to Amazon. We all use Amazon, even though we don't like to, right? Uh, and you just go about your purchases like normal. I don't see who you are. And a small percentage of your purchase gets kicked back to this here show. Or I will do read throughs, which I won't do here today, but the read throughs go for Amazon, not on it. I don't get any information from on it. From Amazon, I don't get your name or your billing. Don't worry. If you, again, you want to do your one night in Bangkok like David Carradine, baby. Dan, is that joke going to ever stop? No. Uh, but, you know, if you want to do that, I'm not going to not gonna call you out. I may pontificate on the items that you purchase, but I won't call you out and you get to support this here show. Or, if just want to do it straight up uh you can always use uh the uh paypal uh donation link there uh for a safe secure uh tip for any of your plays donation of the show some of you use that too much you know who you are you are not allowed you've already paid for your lifetime memberships but whether you support the show monetarily or are just kind uh you can get in my dms like uh I think I wrote Jizz Hawk. Jesus, it's Sizz Hawk. Man, my handwriting is terrible. Sorry, Sizz Hawk, whoever you are. But uh, he, he's been a longtime listener, and he was, you know, he, you know, some people had to go out of state and travel for their wagers, and especially on weeks like this, I'm a little late. And uh, it sucks because I can't facilitate you guys. And that bums me out. So, uh, you know, Sizz Hawk uh, took me up on my... Um, my prior invitations that I gave you guys, and I'm going to repeat here, is that, you know, again, add Dan Tom and I can't guarantee I'll get back to you. But uh, I will try my best uh, for listeners of this show to tell you what I'm leaning and looking at in case you're waiting you know, for your feed for this podcast to drop, and it, and it has not. So, um, yeah, man, uh, there's probably a bunch of things that I forgot to shout, like you know, last top five, shout out to my man, Dan Albert. Um, but, yeah, it's been um, oh, Chris Rennie as well. That was a great show. Great shows there. Two shows last week for you. Two great shows for you. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, it's been fun. So thank you guys. Long, long, random thing. But now we're going to jump to the breakdown, I promise. So uh, it's UFC 264. We're going to go from top to bottom. We're roughly about 14 to 15 in. And, uh, yeah, man, I got my in-depth already up for uh, Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor 3. I also got it written for uh, Burns versus uh, Stephen uh, Wonderball. Tom's in there. Um, you know, going to be uh, dropping on uh, uh, MMAJunkie.com. Don't you worry. Those full in-depths with the technical analysis and some unique stats will uh, will all be up there. I'll try to get to what I can remember. But uh, let's go from the top. Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor 3. Um, yeah, last time I picked the wrong person, I picked McGregor. And it really bones me out. Not that I got it wrong, because like I went back to read it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I called out the, the, the path. I should have listened to it, especially since it's like the one thing I preach, which is Southpaw versus Southpaw check right hooks. And I said that if Poirier can punctuate uh, the longer exchanges with the check right hook, he can win this fight. He did that. 
Um, but I didn't pick him to do it. I just laid it out like I tend to do on these things. Um, again, the analysis, my analysis picks and betting are all different things. <laughs> and I don't say that as the hedge or, you know, cushion my fall. Uh, I don't need that, nor do I do that. Y'all know that, but it, they, they are different things. So I was wrong on the pick. And, um, yeah, that check right hook was there. It was punctuating exchanges. You see it early in round one, late in round one. And uh, arguably it's what uh, sets them off uh, for the finishing shot. Uh, in the second round, and even speaking of second round finishing shots from Southpaw people who McGregor lost to, uh, even in that first Diaz fight at 196, uh, before the you know cro- uh, jab cross continuum patent, uh, you know like a coil cobra that Diaz delivers there about 222 mark of the second round. Just before that, he actually lands a check hook to line him up for that, and that's something that Diaz does a lot because his older brother Nick Diaz does a lot, as you guys see that. Saw that uh, announcement for Nick Diaz, Robbie Lawler 2 in the works. We'll see if it happens. But shouts to my man. I believe it was Kaposa who posted the gif of uh, the finish, or not finishing shot, before the finishing shot, before that check jab that knocks Robbie out. The shot that not, that rocks him first um, is a 1-2. But before the 1-2, again, it's that it's that uh, check hook, I believe, that uh, kind of straightens Robbie out for that 1-2 shot down the pike. Yeah, so you know, Diaz do pretty good against Southpaw and Southpaw matchups. Uh, whereas... Uh, what is it? I believe Connor is now uh, three and two uh, against Southpaws, and Poirier is four and two. Poirier two and zero oh in rematches, whereas Connor is one and one in rematches. Uh, for those stats for you. Um, but yeah, uh, you know. And by the way, shout out to the the fight side guys as well. They've been uh, one of the other people. Only not only other. I'm sure plenty of others i don't want to discredit any analysts out there but uh, i just do want to give credit to the fight site analysts um you know about talking about poirier's uh lead hand work uh, and citing those things uh, and for me when i was looking back at it not only did i cite the connection with nate but uh i correlated with in my tweet earlier this week um <clears throat> and something that i always kind of preach which is rolling under your twos and part of the reason, shout out to old boxing coach Gil Martinez there. He goes, roll into your twos so you don't get hit with that check hook coming back at you. And he said that because you should just assume a check hook is coming back at you if you're going to commit to your damn cross like that. Uh, and boxing or, you know, otherwise, as we've seen in MMA here with the, the, these two second fight. Uh, Connor doesn't really do that. He'll do slow, exaggerated ones, as will Poirier. But the difference is, even though they both will kind of pantomime the head movement they should do, like a lot of fighters, it's like, and I get that. It's like you're like, you know, but like, yeah, head movement. And you'll be like all technical while you're like out in space. And as soon as you get in within punching range, it all goes away. Um, you know, they're both guilty of that to some degree. Uh, but the difference with Poirier is that uh, his style um, is better suited for prolonged exchanges. His chin now has caught up with that as he's not killing himself for the weight cut where he can better navigate, and that's the key word that I use. Poirier is just a better navigator, whether we're talking about exchanges, prolonged fights, or wars. Um, all those different variants, he's the better navigator there. And uh, his chin, as we saw and have seen outside of the McGregor rematches, has done a pretty good job of holding up, unless it's like a perfectly time again, check hook, uh, which uh, Michael Johnson knocked him out with. And again, McGregor doesn't do that. Could he? Sure, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do it with as much power for a move that he's just that's just not hardwired, just like the rolling off of his crosses. So I still think he's going to be the one to get hit with the check hook. If he turns any offense around, it's going to be leg kicks because Poirier, too, excuse me, is susceptible to leg kicks. Um, but yeah. I didn't cover too much grappling in my in-depth because I don't feel it's going to cover or play much more of a role than it did the second fight. I still feel like it played a, a good role in the second fight, by the way. I just you know, don't feel it will play much more as far as giving McGregor another look and making him work, which is very important to beat McGregor. So <clears throat> not downplaying it. I just, again, I think too much was made of the calf kick the, uh, last time and too much ahead of it this time is being made of potential wrestling when that's that's not it. It's, it's again, it's... It, Southpaw versus striking, it's Southpaw versus Southpaw striking, folks. And um, I am no authority, but there's plenty of people better analysts than me, from the Jack Slacks to Ryan Wagner's, or just better striking analysts, both mentioned, as well as many others. Um, uh, you know, uh, Connor Rebush, uh, Phil McKenzie, the Heavy Hands guys, of course, are great. 
Um, but so I'm I'm no authority, but you know <clears throat> I will say I'm one of the more consistent people as far as southpaw stats and southpaw analysis, and as well and or bringing up specific southpaw points. So going to try to listen to myself this time around. Could I be overcorrecting the steering wheel as we all do, especially in the media like myself? Of course, of course, definitely. There's, I will admit that, which is why maybe I've been hesitant to play Poirier. Um, but if you are confident in this fight, I feel like it's money line or, or bust. You know, if you like Connor enough, you're getting the plus money on him. Even Poirier at more of the high marks between minus 120 and 130 is playable chalk point, but makes me a little nervous. However, the way the press conference went, which I just watched um, today, um, yeah, man, McGregor bouncing back from the knockout. Again, Poirier's had to bounce back from a hurt leg. Poirier's had to bounce out back from being rocked. Poirier's had to find his way back into wars where he's down rounds. Poirier has had to bounce back from a knockout, things Connor has not successfully really done. Especially that last part. So that was troublesome. And I don't think I figure that's going to play more in the Poirier line as far as the trend of money coming in on him. Uh, that being said, even if that's the case and the press conference works opposite from people like myself waiting for a better line, still your best chance is probably waiting till fight day Saturday for the best line as, you know, Irish, European. UK, however you want to divvy it up there, they they back their fighters and their neighboring fighters, so to speak, at the betting windows, right? So if you like Poirier, wait a bit. If you like Connor, you're getting some plus money now. If you're feeling contrarian, you will get good lines on overs, but unders and quote unquote safer bets and angles have been stacked shit high and are pretty much unplayable. So for me, unless you're trying to be contrarian or you feel strongly on a side for the money line, just sit back and enjoy the show. But I do think Poirier puts him away in round three. Check right hook, baby. Uh, Steven Thompson, minus 152. Gilbert the Burns, plus 128. This line is almost exactly flipped from the opening. Of course, uh, Thompson was opened as the dog. This was one of the few times where I did take a little bit. Of course, even then, going early, which I rarely do. Yet, I was still somehow late, so where I missed dog money in one window or one house that I used and only got plus 100. Uh, I didn't get any of the plus 130 opener. Uh, but, you know, that being said, minus 150 or minus one, uh, you know, below minus 160, below minus 150 is still playable chalk if you're feeling confident in this fight. I just can't be too confident in how it ends. Like, I've been burned before. I picked Steven Thompson was going to get a, a late finish on Jeff Neal. And to his credit, you know, despite the headbutt cut and the busted out knee that he had to deal with for like the last two rounds, uh, and even went well, after he had the knee busted and acknowledged it, Wonder Boy was sitting down and being aggressive, which he does to his credit when he gets his feel. People overlook that, right? Um, so I wasn't completely off base, but still at the end of the day, even though I was right on the pick, I was wrong on the bet as far an angle as far as the under four and a half for that Neal fight. I feel like it happens here. Although it's three rounds, it's like it's weird, right? Because part of me is like, there's death taxes in Thompson by decision. And I'm like, well, there's maybe another fighter who is the more the death taxes in decision. We'll get to him shortly. You guys probably know who that is. <laughs> and I mean that with all love. But um, but also because, um, you know, you're like, oh, well, there's the crowd. That's going to influence it, right, for a finish. However, Gilbert Burns, I feel like, you know, I was reminded that he actually has been getting better with his reactionary shots. He does Still does his best work, arguably in the clinch and against the cage, which will be a problem in the big cage where this fight will be at the Team Home Arena, not the Apex Small Cage, folks. Um, and I guess get sick of me saying that shit, but uh, it's just the dynamic that I got to throw out there. Uh, but he's got better at his reactive shots, as you see in like round two and uh, and some other points in the Woodley fight. I know Woodley. Can, pretty pretty shot but still um you know Gil gilbert burns shows the ability to do these things and pretty well but timing thompson for a shot is harder than it seems even 78 percent as impressive as it is it's probably more impressive than that because most of those are like dated back to like his five or six takedowns he gave up to matt brown as most of the takedowns that he's given statistically happen early in his career thompson ironically gotten better maybe not so ironically that he's worked with chris weidman and now working with him more uh, looks to be in shape uh, 38 to 34, but they're not as far as your age as you might believe. They're actually only three years apart because Thompson just turned 38 
and Burns is just about to turn 35. So three years difference there. So Burns not exactly a spring chicken himself, though he fights like a young man and obviously has the more youthful energy and has youth as an edge for whatever that is worth. Uh, he does show the ability to counter off a southpaw jab, you know, even though it was uh, kind of the perfectly placed shot. He'll probably need another perfectly placed shot like he got against Maya, but that was Maya, not Thompson. Though I do bring that up because Thompson will probably be fighting a lot from southpaw, as most traditional martial arts fighters do, from Lyoto Pettis to Stephen Thompson. Um, they prefer the open stance look. A lot of switch stance fighters to access that superiority that they built in their head, hence building their style that way will like to feel like they have the superior hand by being able to switch and keep the open stance. Um, so expect a lot of that, but he just can't drift because Burns, even though he's not good at eating straight shots or the best at throwing them, he can't counter them on his best of days. And he can throw leg kicks. I'll just see if Burns... Burns kind of can sit back and counter, and he's gotten better at countering his career went on, but I feel like he's got to get back to his pressuring and more of those, you know... Uh, Dutch kickboxing style roots, Joe. Uh, you know, and, and pressure forward with some leg kicks. Um, not that he has to fight like Pettis, but what Pettis was doing was essentially the blueprint that's always been around that, that Duke Rufus knows about. You got to low kick these guys. You know, I know I was, you know, half trolling and half not being serious because I, I stated that I'm not qualified to answer the question between this Thompson Adesanya one going around. And, you know, I like to troll because you guys know that. I might have a karate bias, and I do like Stephen Thompson stuff. You're asking which style I like, but as far as which is better, I'm not qualified. But what I will say is I'll bring up the more popular talking point is that with the PKA and the more uh, of those base kind of style uh, kickboxing, uh, point fighting kind of style uh, tournaments that Stephen Thompson came up, you couldn't kick below the legs. So um, that's where Duke Rufus came up as well. And you see that still translate today in MMA with Douglas Lima, uh, Michael Page, and of course Shogun Hua is a real classic example at UFC 104. Really, you know, I know he lost that technically by decision, but he really, you know, uh, planted the seeds that would later get him the belt and plant the seeds for other fighters against traditional style martial artists. You know, march them down with the leg kicks, uh, counter with the leg kicks, and keep your counter crosses at the ready. Uh, not a bad idea. You could do the Woodley style and and sit back and wait. Um, you know, that is another thing, you know, that's kind of, uh, although in a weird, more low percentage way and God bless him at work, uh, Pettis did, but it'll be real interesting for Burns to see if he does that. But because of those level changing takedowns that I started off making a point a couple minutes ago with, um, part of me thinks initially that's why Stephen Thompson, he, you know, even if he does get the finish, it won't be till later. Cause I think he's going to be very cautious of that. Uh, and those counters, and it, it's a very important fight for Stephen Thompson. However, you know, I think the crowd's going to make, you know, it'll feel Thompson in the positive, but I think it might feel Burns in the negative and really make him go because Burns not as composed, not as durable, and not as nuanced as his teammate Luke, um, who I actually picked to beat Stephen Thompson. Uh, so uh, if I was wrong about that one, I have a hard time backing Burns for this one. So give me Stephen Thompson. I'll see if his line goes down. Uh, I'm not confident in playing by decision although that's where i was initially leaning i think i officially picked inside the distance there so uh you know we'll go third round stephen thompson finish there all right uh tai to ivasa minus 136 greg hardy plus 116 this is a fight that i was just like easy avoid don't care about i'm getting more excited as it goes on between you know tai to ivasa being tied to ivasa and greg hardy well i guess being greg hardy and you know not exactly making himself more likable not that you know that likable in the first place at least for people like uh you know i don't know anyways i'm not gonna go there the, 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 let's let's talk about them fighting wise um i'm actually gonna go tai to ivasa here i think he's the favorite justifiably but again it's not super confident as the line isn't too wide nor should it be uh but tai to ivasa i know it was a, a shot stefan struve and harry hunsucker so obviously the competition questionable no offense to those gentlemen but um, it's funny, like, like was he training with George Lopez and Alex Volkanovsky over in Australia, Ty? Because he looks like he's doing a Volkanovsky impression, which is crazy. But again, it's what you do when you get on the inside. And sure, a lot of that fell apart when he engaged Drew, but it ended up being ugly in the clinch where he was able to kind of post and strike off the break to get a knockout. Uh, but, hey, man, it showed that Ty was trying. Uh, it showed some improvements in the composure. 
uh, it showed that he, you know, he can he can really kick some legs really hard as well in that fight, which will serve him well against Hardy, who's obviously more of a boxing centric stance and striker. And then in the Harry Hunsucker fight, stage by Harry Hunsucker is the opposite, where he actually hits a nice counter um, off the fighter charging him. So he showed two important, very basic dynamics that you need to show at heavyweight. Um, does that mean it's tie 2.0 and he's going for a title run? Of course not. But it's enough for me to pick him over Hardy, who I've never been sold on. And it's just, man, and again, man, I'm not hating shouts to, you know, uh, my, my football brethren who have played. And, you know, the coordinators out there, I think offense and defense coordinators are some of the coolest jobs in sports, period, just because I'm a nerd like that. But, man, when Brendan Schaub is your best MMA fighter that comes from the football place or touched the NFL and also touched the UFC, I mean, that's... I don't know how much longer we can keep getting excited about these guys, folks. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Ty Tuivasa. I'm taking rugby over football in this case. Uh, give me durable. Give me durable and... Uh, Give me durable and dumb versus athletic and overconfident. There we go. That's the breakdown. Uh, we got Arin Aldana. Yeah. Shout out to, who is it? Is it Cool Thought, who's an Aldana fan with me out there? Uh, and then Yana Kunitskaya, plus 102. Mama Kunitskaya. Dan, easy. Um, no, honestly. Uh, these, are, these, are, these, are, these, are, these are two uh, interesting clashes. You guys know I'm a big Arin Aldana fan. I like the boxing style, although... I know she hurt her foot early on in that fight, but that still doesn't really explain the... Um, it's like she was like a Energizer Bunny that was programmed to just beat the outside foot of home, and she just kept chasing that and then not cutting off the cage. So that was troubling. Yana Kunitskaya, uh, however, is not like home, does not fight from the same stance or stylings, um, but she can make things ugly in the clinch. Um, I didn't go back to relitigate the fight that I always cite with her last fight that I... Still don't think she won, you know, for cutting a girl with an elbow at like the last second of the round just by getting outworked and outfought fought the rest of the round. But hey, neither here nor there. It's a close fight for a reason. It's probably dog or pass, but really you probably should just pass this fight. I'm going to pick Aldana in the big cage. She will suit her uh, circular lateral uh, stick and move stylings. Okay, we'll go with that. Uh, Sh Sean O'Malley, minus 900. Uh, Chris Matinho, plus 610. Don't know much about Chris Matinho. He lists himself as a wrestler. Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Purple Belt. So those things could come together if he's able to get O'Malley down A and B, extend the fight. But I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do either of those in the big cage and on short notice. As I suspect the matchmaker selected this kid for a reason. Now, he comes from a team that is very well respected, and you know I respect as far as you know the New England cartel. Shouts to Tyson Chartier there, as you should probably have some long strikers to work with in the form of Rob Font and Calvin Cater. But Calvin Cater hasn't really been sparring. How we, they haven't exactly had time to prep for this, um, <clears throat> and uh, O'Malley is, uh, is is probably going to be ready. Um, so uh, you know, judging by uh, how both how you know Moutinho seems to be do or die. I don't think he's lost the decision when he loses. I believe it's all by finish, and O'Malley likes those first-round finishes. Well, you're going to give me those basic trends and kind of serve it up to give me plus money, plus 130. I think you can still get plus 110 or plus 100, depending on what house. For O'Malley round one, well, I, I took that. That's going to be on my betting sheet as well. O'Malley round one, plus 130 is what I got it for. Uh, that's what I played. Oh, by the way, uh, Tai Tuivasa Hardy. I actually played the under. I think it's going to be violent, 1.5. Plus 150, uh, depending on what house you can get. If you can get a 2.5 at minus 137, that's, I actually like that better. I know it's chalk uh, for a prop, but I feel that's really safe under 2.5, and that's a really low entry point. Um, so if you can hit either of those, uh, I don't blame you. I did, for whatever that's worth. You don't got to follow me off that cliff. And I got O'Malley round one here. All right, prelims. You got, excuse me, Max Payne Griffin. Minus 184, uh, Carlos Condit plus 154. I don't know what it is about Max Griffin. There's something unintentionally funny about him, the way he talks and stuff. I love it, but then, like, he sounds super ridiculously violent. Like, I heard an interview with him on a junkie radio, and, like, the dude just sounds super violent. And it was almost just like, wait, are you a martial artist, bro? This does not sound like a martial artist talk. Well, damn, they're not martial artists. They're fighters. I know. I just, I know he reps Mara Noble's martial arts, and, and we all know that... <laughs> 
martial arts and all that martial arts spirit is all but lost its meaning these days. But the point is, in Max Griffin's credit to why I'm picking him, is that he does have that killer instinct, folks. It's a good thing to have in the cage fighting game. Um, Kara Condit um, doesn't look completely shot like I thought he was in this you know recent revival, if you will, of his. But uh, Max Griffin, even though you know a lot of these decisions could have gone his way, by the way, but for better or worse, that he fights close. The fact is, he is equipped for these wars. So uh, I just feel like he's going to be the more durable. Um, the youth will definitely, I think, be an edge here. And uh, give me Max Griffin. He's probably a decent parlay piece, although I didn't play him. Uh, though you could sub him in for any of the slots that I did in my two leg coming up. Next up, Michel, my fitness consigliere, Michel. Uh, Pajeda, uh, minus 162. Uh, Nico Price, uh, plus 136. Oh, by the way, backtrack. Taitu Ivasa, did he fight, uh, did he fight somebody? I gotta fulfill a request here because, uh, who did he lose to? And I'll defend this loss if he lost to him. Yeah, he lost to a black boy. A black boy. Even off. Sir, we don't serve that here. I take Hamburger then. Uh, but yeah, man, you know I'm a fan okay. of Blagoy. Nothing could kill Blagoy. Nothing could kill the Grimace. Uh, sorry, I had, to, I had to do that for someone. <laughs> they appreciate that. Someone else shouted the obscure movie references and Tony being the drunk, uh, Tony Ferguson being the drunk uncle of the barbecue, which is true. So thank you guys for those shouts. Uh, yeah, I took um, Michel. Uh, Pajeda. No, I took Nico Price here. I actually sprinkled on him as a dog. Um, it's weird. It's like, does Michelle Pajeda either, like, does he keep up this streak three in a row? Uh, fighting smat for him? Or do the crowds bring back bring back the chaos reigns gift that's appropriate for this fight? Shouts to the Antichrist. Ooh, that's another mo fucked up movie I can assign somebody. Hey, Chris Medaffer, you listen to Ant you ever watch Antichrist? I'm gonna fucking terrorize the sound of Vance guys with that movie now. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, chaos is gonna reign here. So whether Pajeda fights conservative or not, I'm gonna go with a uh, weedless Nico Price to go nuts because he's been weedless all camp and cut it out. And now as he shows up for fight week, the NSC is like, yeah, we're just gonna stop with all that shit despite threatening me off for five year suspensions. We're gonna go the other way. So I'll go Nico Price. Spring break. Spring break forever. Uh, Ilya Teporia, minus 240. Ryan Hall, plus 198. I was looking to play Teporia, so I should maybe use him for a parlay piece. But he's pulling the uh, Jamal. Bolt the door if you're coming in, Jamal. Uh, Jamal Hill. Uh, by going, uh, you know, saying he's not worried about the submission artist who wins all his fight by submissions, submissions, which is never smart. And how do these prospects like Taporia lose? What, what is the prospect loss usually consists of folks? Submissions, right? From Conor McGregor on down. So this could definitely be that spot. I do not like that. Taporia is training back in Spain. Uh, he wasn't with MMA Masters or Stateside for this camp. Um... Did not see any recognizable names, recognizable names, jujitsu or MMA in his camp pictures. So yeah, I'm gonna go to Poria here. You guys know I'm a fan of the jujitsu. He also has a bit of Greco-Roman that doesn't get talked about, and you know, of course, his boxing and body work, which you know Dan Tom's a big fan of. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll pick him here over um, Ryan. Uh, I compare things in, uh, uh, improperly to the Holocaust Hall. <laughs> Dan is not his nickname. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, I actually appreciated, you know, Ryan Hall using, uh, you know, Dan Tom's, uh, if this was Pee-wee's Playhouse, uh, that's the magic word, you know, sample size, sample size, sample size. Take a shot of Dan Thompson's sample size. Um, <laughs> I forget how well people know me. Uh, the Roadshow guys are like, uh, we're calling me out for saying, like, contrary and apropos, but you guys know my old dictionary. You guys only edit my videos and work for fucking years on it now, but uh, it was fucking great, man. I'll, I'll definitely own up to all that shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Ryan Hall using my word out there. Not enough for, to get me to pick him. I got to pour you here. Um, speaking of potential rice issues, I'm from South Africa. South Africa, many years there. I don't like Tiger. Uh, Jesus Christ, not everybody from there is racist. <laughs> Uh, nah, it's not, it's nothing to do with that. Uh, we got, uh, wow, Drykus uh, de Vlees, uh, minus 160, and Trevin J. J. Giles. Uh, J. Giles is minus 102. Uh, I was looking at J. Giles' dog money, um, but it's dog or pass. Um, do please probably win. I didn't do research for this fight. Uh, I submitted Giles as my pick. 
So I will stick to it. Um, you know, gotta see, gotta see more from uh, Duplis. I don't know how the guy used to make a welterweight. weight. That was insane. Um, yeah. All right. Next fight: Jennifer Maya minus one ninety six. Jessica I plus one sixty four. I really wanted to go with Evil Eye, but I went with Maya here. But this feels like an uh, an avoid slash a dogger pass. Like uh, by a dogger pass, I'd say these odds especially. Um, Jessica I could you know pull out a decision here. Uh, if you bet that, I wish you the best of luck. My official pick is Maya, and I stayed away in what should be a very close fight, whether it could primarily consist in open space or ends up being an ugly wrestling uh, sludge fest against the fence. Um, what could also be both is Brad Tavares, minus 168, and Omari Ahmed, a Turk, a Turk, a Jihad, Ahmedov, um, plus 142. Uh, this is bias, you know. I gotta back my boy Brad, but really, this is a really this is a fight that I feel he should roll here. I know, I know, Dan. You you pick your guys. Listen, I, I state my bias, you know. I state I state the wild the wild picks even, you know, when I'm picking my uh <laughs> my cowboys there with uh, Justin James and Ron These guys getting into central. <laughs> I love those guys, by the way. I'm just saying, you know, I get it. I get it, folks. I'm not, I'm not fucking, I'm biased, but I'm not completely blind here, okay? I get it. But uh, Brad Tavares, man, he's proven, and I told y'all, you know, I told y'all. I didn't know why this was a disrespectful line against Carlos Jr. He, in, If you're not going to knock Brad Tavares out, your game is to try to take him down, you're going to lose. Now, in defense, Ahmedov has more power and better counters specifically. He's got those hardwired two threes. Uh, which will be very dangerous here, and it's much more dangerous than Carlos Jr. Um, and you could argue the line reflects that. Sure, I think the line's fair where it is, uh, but, man, I'm tempted to just lay the chalk on Brad Tavares, but I probably won't because I already put him in a parlay. Uh, he is one leg of the parlay for even slash plus money, depending on where you graph. Um, and I also played uh, Tavares by decision, plus 130, because that's how he wins. There's death. Taxes and Tavares by decision, baby. Remember that death taxes and Tavares by decision. Now he's gonna go knock Ahmed off out in the third round. Watch, but um, but yeah, no, I, I like Tavares here. Uh, Ahmed is not gonna be able to get him down. He's gonna tire himself out. Ahmed off gases, and uh, against a guy who can keep range with jabs and leg kicks, um, I think that's gonna shut down as long as he doesn't get laxed days ago. It should shut down the hard wired counters that Ahmed off has, and if he makes it a, a round and a half. You should be able to start, you know, walking to the window to cash those Tavares tickets. Maybe not the decision one, because he, he could pull it out late. But I, I think Tavares should at least be the side uh, past a minute and a half. So yeah, uh, pick your angles, money line if that's playable for you. You're that confident. I just did him in a parlay and I did a decision prop for good old BT Brad Tavares. Uh, next fight. Zalgas Jumagulov minus three thirty five. Jerome Rivera plus two seventy. Zhaka Jumagulov, of course, looks like Kazakh Jim Norton. It looks like if Jim Norton and referee Tim Mills had a child. Of course, referee Tim Mills does a lot of refereeing in Colorado. If you saw that recent uh, retweet of uh, Rumble knocking out uh, Tommy Spear, shout out to Luca Fury, hilarious quote tweet on that. Um, Tim Mills is the referee. It looks like Jim Norton, terrified uh, that he just saw a man die, which he did, by the way. Uh, like Luca Fury said, if you... Go to the arena now, and you slip the security guard to 20. He will show you where Tommy Spears' corpse is at. Um, and by the way, Jim Norton watching with uh, Matt Sarah for a watch-along. I'm like, I, 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 they're not doing it for these fights this early, but I wish they did because I would tune in just to see if, like, someone says something or just to watch Jim Norton's eyes if he just goes, hey, that guy kind of looks like me. Uh, maybe it's because uh, I was a fan of the Eat a Bullet album, but I got Zalga Zumagulov here for my pick. And as the second leg for the parlay, I know, Chalky, I know, but Jerome Rivera, he's scrappy, but he's not built to circle into any strengths so much as that he has them. He's not really built maybe to be in the UFC uh, right now or in this division because, in my opinion, he's mainly just not built for the division. He fits the tall guys cutting to flyweight or bantamweight that shouldn't be there. Um, when you're that tall fighting in either of those two weight classes, you're probably sacrificing a lot, and, and it's clearly durability. Like This is a fight like Zalgas could get a finish, but I just expect him to roll via his stance-switching volume, um, his ability to make things ugly against the cage, and his really good uh, uh, deceptively uh, 
stymieing scrambling ability. So I'm going to go with the fight myth global champ. I know he didn't win a lot of those fights, arguably, like against Ali Baga Otinov or Tyson Nam. But still, uh, he has enough of a process, much more experience, better wins. Uh, Zhao, Goff, Zhao Gass and uh, Tavares for even or plus money, depending on where you pair them for what price. Lastly, but not leastly, uh, Alan Amadovsky, minus 136, and Hugh Yaozong, or as I like to say, Huge Zong, uh, plus 116 for the Huge Zong. Uh, Alan Amadovsky will probably get a lot of favor his way because of the last name, but again, you know, no, no disrespect to my Macedonian brothers or sisters, Shishka Pishka, sorry, that's the only thing I know how to say, and it's dirty uh, in Macedonian, uh, but he is not Eastern, like the Eastern European of like, you know, the Russian or the Dagestanis that he may look like, or people may unfairly assume because they don't break these names down and these guys' origins enough. This guy is not good. Um, you know, neither is Huge Zong from what I can remember, and my Chinese brother, and as much as I, I want to be in their corner, uh, it's hard to be confident in them. Um, uh, I did pick huge Zong here, uh, you know, got bias for the, for the big Zong, uh, and, uh, and yeah, uh, we'll see. Hopefully you can pull off the upset. I sure as shit didn't play it. No matter how much plus money you put, uh, this is sure as shit an avoid. All right. How do we do on time? Oh, 46, not bad. X, ex- but dieted. Do, 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 Mary Jane. Oh, um, oh, I forgot to say, Thompson, seven, knocked down seven of his last 11, all but one of his knockdowns that he sustained from the same stance, all but one of his knockdowns came from the right hand, of course, that was Darren Till, that was the one left-handed knockdown he suffered, and that was Tyron Woodley, round five, fight two, where he got knocked down when he was in the same stance, so that's another reason why Thompson likes open stance, and Luke landed on him when he was levering punches, something that Burns can do, but not as well, but look for that, and it was a headbutt that caused a cut in that fight, the commentary missed it. Uh, That's all for my notes, folks, so yeah, recapping, taking DP, (laughs) I waited, phrasing, (laughs) taking DP here, whoa, easy, taking Dustin Poirier over Conor McGregor, taking uh, Wonderboy over Burns taking uh, Tuivasa over Hardy. W I O T I taking Arin Aldana over Yana Kulitskaya. Mama Kulitskaya. I don't know why I keep saying that. Uh, taking Sean O'Malley over Chris Motinho. Taking Max Payne Griffin over Carlos Condit. Taking Nico Price Spring Break for Elva over Michel Pajeda. Taking Ilya Teporia over <laughs> Ryan Hall. Taking South Africa. No, taking uh, Jay Giles. Jevin Giles over Dave Lace. Taking Jennifer Maya over Jessica I. Taking BT Brad Tavares over a Derka Derka, yeah. Ah, made off. Taking Jumagulov, aka Kazakh Jim Norton, over Rivera. Taking Huge Zong. Well, easy, damn. I got Huge Zong. There we go. Uh, over Alan Amadovsky. Um, Zalgus and Brad have parlayed for even or plus money. Nico, plus 140. I took a sprinkle. I may play Thompson. Uh, if the price goes down, definitely may pay Poirier if that price goes down. O'Malley round one I played for props plus 130. Taito Ivasa Hardy under 1.5 or 2.5 where you can get it. I played the 1.5. Um, Tavares decision plus 130. Um, avoid what you like, but those are my plays. Those are my picks. Thank you, guys. I don't deserve the love. Appreciate you all, whether you're uh, on YouTube, Daniel Tom MMA, or listening on Apple Podcasts. Appreciate the five-star ratings and the v- reviews, the likes, and subscribes. All the shares, again, you guys have been too fucking kind. I don't deserve it. Um, go support the things that I, I retweet and the people I retweet and shout. Um, uh, and, yeah, good luck on your picks and plays. And uh, always protect your neck. <laughs>